Hi, welcome to I Shoot Watches. My name is Dayton, and um, today I'm going to do a quick video about uh, my vintage watches and uh, where I buy them and what I paid for them. And uh, mostly I'm into inexpensive watches, so this is not like a flexing thing. It's more like uh, bargain hunting and auction websites, particularly in Switzerland. Um, but that being said, the first several that I, I'm going to show you here are eBay purchases. So um, this is a Seiko Bellmatic I purchased on eBay. Um, it was 305 US dollars from Japan. The seller was Reed 0702. And I bought three uh, Bellmatics from him. And they're all very nice. Very nice seller. So that was the f first one. Then there's this. Oh, wait, actually. This one was 170, 197. So this has got a little problem that needs to be fixed with the. Um, let's just smudge. Uh, the, the day wheel has a problem. And a lot of most of these watches don't have a wind on them right now, so they may run a little bit, but they're not set and running. Uh, okay, so one ninety seven fifty on eBay for this one was not in as good a condition. And this one, these are all kind of the same series. This one was three thirty one, and I think. All three of those were same seller, yeah. So the next one is um, this Datum Genève. So this is a just a ETA twenty four fifty two movement in a stainless steel case. Eventually, I'll do another video where I um, actually get into the movements of these. This was 39 Swiss francs. Eventually, I'll do either separate videos about them or one where I go into deeper detail. So this was an ETA 2472. This is a watch that I modified, removed the dial from it. The dial originally looked like it does in this picture. So this was 25 Swiss francs. And then I have a replacement dial here that it's the same dial basically as in the picture there. And but I also have an additional movement 2472. So I'll, that's a project that's underway to get that working again. When I bought this 2472, I bought two yeah, actually, the other one is... Where's the other one? Totally out of sequence. Actually, it's not in here. Okay, well, anyway... Oh, wait, is that it? Yeah. There's the other one, 35 francs. Uh, the dial for that is put away somewhere, but the, the case... They both basically have the same case and the same movement, different dials by the same company. Anyway, because I was going to do some work on those, I bought two 2472s, and that was really helpful just for getting to know the movement and being able to swap parts around and stuff like that. Um, the next one here, this this was part of a, this is a Pierpont. Uh, this was part of a kit of $80 worth of spare Swiss parts, vintage parts. I only screen grabbed one of the lots, but basically it was two lots added up to, to, to eight, 79 Swiss francs, I think, 22 and 39. Um, so this was just one of those lots. But basically this watch and some other parts and things came in this lot of watches, and this watch worked fine. Um, <clears throat> the next one is this Langdorf Lanco... So this one I'm working on cleaning right now. So this this came 
it's probably new old stock. It's in pretty good shape. Well, the, 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 the crown's a little bit rusted out. But basically, this is a Lanco movement um, in a stainless steel case. And the logo on it says uh, Langdorf, which is the, the canton or the city where, the city where um, Lanco was located. There's like a shooting club, as in gun shooting. And so I also bought this little pin for the shooting club. And it has the date of... Um, let's see if I can see that. Nineteen forty two. I can't see if that says fifty five. Or eighty five. Eighty five. Nineteen forty two. Pistol. Pistol Shooters of Langdorf. It's interesting that they started the Pistol Club in 1942 when Switzerland was neutral. In World War II. Um, okay, so that was 27 Swiss francs. Swiss franc is approximately the same as a dollar. Okay, so then there's this Patek Philippe movement, which is here. So that's another project that's underway. There's the dial for that in the hands. 401 Swiss francs. This console, this is one of the great bargains. This is a console, um, Helvetia, I don't remember the number of the Helvetia movement. It's called Console 1440, but it's a Helvetia, I think 1770 or something. But only $61 for that. And that's kind of my favorite watch right now. And then there's this Mikosa, which was 30 Uh, I also like this this watch a lot. This is um, Helvetia movement and the Helvetia case. I, I like this in particular because it doesn't have a date wheel or date window. So you can just turn it. it it's automatic, of course. You can just put it on, wear it. Don't have to worry about the date. And then this is... Oh, this is the other flurrier. So this is an IWC Cal 8531. And this was 1,500 Swiss francs. It's 18 karat gold in very good condition. And it came with a, came with a certificate of authenticity from IWC. It had been serviced or something, so IWC had given a... It's not the original purchase papers, but it's basically a authenticity paper. Uh, and then we have this Omega Seamaster. This was 350 Swiss francs, not including the bracelet, which uh, bracelet is a Novo Link 1168. I bought that on Omega Forums for I think $225. So $350 for the watch and $225 for the bracelet if I have if I remember correctly um, <clears throat> this is a youngins mega 1000 
It came with a different strap, like a integrated. Oh, that's gross. It came with an integrated strap. I changed it out for this one because I like it better. But uh, this was. Oh, these are all on Ricardo, by the way. That was my whole point was to tell you where I bought them. So Ricardo.ch is this auction website in Switzerland. Everything except for the first three, the the Seikos were eBay, and then everything after that has been Ricardo. This was 150 Swiss francs. The cool thing about this watch, aside from <laughs> collecting dirt, um, it it has a radio, it has four radios in it to get the signal from the atomic clock, wherever in Berlin or Boulder, Fort Collins, Colorado, and um, and it has all the kind of that's a dual time. This is the last time, four days ago, is the last time it synchronized with uh, DCF 77, which is the broadcast from Berlin, I think. And <clears throat> has a stopwatch. Countdown timer, alarm. I gotta turn that off. So that's the youngins. I, I, I like this because it's always accurate, and it's it's old school LCD. Uh, this is an 18 karat gold Eterna. I paid 506 Swiss francs for this. So Eterna's weird. I like Eterna. They, I feel like they they were really well-made watches for their in their time. They had quick set date, which perhaps they had patented, and that's why Rolex didn't have it at that time. I'm not sure, but this is a Rolex. Oh, this is a watch I bought for a friend, so I don't have that to show, but that was a Depraz, a special watch with Muhammad Ali on it, and uh, I paid 64 Swiss francs for that. And, uh, and I give it to a friend. So this uh, this is a Rolex. This is, look, doesn't look like the picture because I had it by ser service by Rolex. So this is also in the... Um, there's a separate video about this, the servicing of this and how much that costs. But the original used watch was 1099 I think the service was another 1500 or something. And this is a console alarm watch. This was 176. And all of these watches, I think without exception, I was bidding against somebody else. So it's not like these were buy it now prices. I just happened to bid the highest. So this is the not an automatic watch, but um, I don't know. For some reason, I like these console watches, the logo and the... They did a lot of stainless steel. Um, I forget what movement is in this. It's kind of common alarm movement for the for that period, but don't remember. Oh, this has a buckle. It says console on it as well. This is a IWC Cal 853 automatic. I reloomed this. There's a video about that. I scratched the dial during the reloom, but that's a. Uh, this one was 606 francs. And I like that watch a lot too. It's on the high end of purchase price. This is an Eterna. This is one of the first watches I bought when I started kind of getting into watches again. Uh, And I think that's kind of why I got hooked on Eterna a bit, because uh, because of the robustness of the in-house movements of that period. This is an IWC Ladies Cal Forty Four. This is all. This is the watch. I also I rebuilt this and did a sixteen-hour-long video and a twenty-minute video now. 
of the of the complete restoration of this movement. So that was 210 Swiss francs. This is a Gerard Perigo uh, gyromatic automatic tiny ladies movement. 77 Swiss francs. I bought this for my wife and then I realized it was radium and it, it was kind of too tiny for her to wear it. So it's just a collector's piece at this point. And then 77, 77 francs for that. So this is from Ramf. The listing is old, so the pictures are gone. But Ramf is a R-A-N-F-F-T dot D-E in Germany. And this is a really interesting. The next watch is from Ramf also. Uh, it's a really interesting website. They have a lot of these weird old, really old watches. A lot of them very cheap and not in great condition. But both of these ran fine. This is 14 karat gold. Uh, this was a radium watch. You can see some of the radium is cracking out of the hand there. You have to be really careful working with radium. It's a good idea to have a Geiger counter to test before you open up a radium watch just so you don't inhale or ingest the um, radium dust as you work on it. And then, so that was, uh, you probably can't read that, 385 euros, but that's 14 karat gold, and it's kind of a cool design. And then this is a Burmy, which I just recently bought. So Burmy, I think, is a, is a watch company from Ticino, the Italian part of Switzerland. I think it still exists. It's existed a long time, as you can tell by this. It's, it's owned by this family called Ber Bernasconi, which there's a lot of construction firm activity in Switzerland it has the name Berlusconi. It's not Berlusconi like the Italian ex-prime minister. It's Bern, Bernasconi. But the, uh, I don't know if there's a relationship there. But this is a really cool watch. It's transparent. So the movement is floating in there and it's got a transparent case back. And that's why I bought it because I'm going to clean it up and, and uh, perhaps put the Patek Philippe movement in here. The problem is I want to make it re look really interesting and nice and not Frankenstein. And that's going to be hard to do. But this was uh, this was only 29 euros. And the really interesting thing for the Patek movement is it's got this transparent case back, which would allow you to see that Patek movement. And the definitely the Burmy movement will pop out, and it's small, and then you've got this cool transparent thing going on around it. But the question is refitting the, the Patek movement and dial in there in a way that is interesting. And yeah. So that's it. That's uh, pricing and source for, I don't know, 18 and 20 different vintage watches that are all not too expensive and all really fun to work with. Uh, if you watch this, if you watch, if you like this video, thanks a lot. Please like, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers uh, in the next few months. And uh, that really helps. And, and check out my other videos. All right. Thanks a lot.